Okay. Everyone sat down? <clears throat> sit down. Well, thank CJ, you. how are you? Um, welcome to your first press conference. <laughs> <laughs> There's plenty of firsts this week, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Are you hoping there'll be a, a first cap as well at the end of it? Yeah, it's always obviously the aim when you go into any camp. Obviously, you see the competition, the squad, squad quality. Like, it's crazy, so I like, just think to train hard and try get the cap as plans to, to make a, a cap, yeah. And what was it like coming into the, the camp? How, oh, was, how was the atmosphere? Like the whole, the whole, all of the boys just made me feel so welcome from the staff to the people in the hotel. Like everyone just got around me, made me feel welcome and just part of the group. And what are your attributes, you think? I mean, wh why is it Stephen Kenny has chosen you? Um, I think to like I'm a direct player, I'm quick, just like to like create a set of goals, so that's what I think I bring. And tell us about your your, your, your upbringing, we're, we're, we're told you spent your early days in Waterford, we're a big hurling fan. Yeah, yeah, so like literally, I think I started playing GA before I started playing soccer, so obviously first grew up when I was in Waterford with mum and sisters, um, lived there for 14, nearly 15 years, obviously I was a big, big into GA stuff like that, so that's where I actually started playing sports and got into sports, and then I think I was 11 or 12 when I started first kicking football about, um, played for Port Law. He was down in Watford and then went to Crack United where I've done well. So, uh, assuming that you will be involved this week, will there be a lot of people up from the sunny southeast? <laughs> yeah, of course. My mum and sister still live here, so they'll be up. They've been tracking me all the time. They've come to games in England, so they're massive fans. I've got a lot of family still in Watford, so I'm sure there'll be a few up here. Best of luck to you, thank you. Can I have that, please? Hi hey, CJ, um, congratulations on the call up. You, you, your international manager, Stephen Kenny, described your journey as interesting to where you are now. How would you describe it? And can you sort of briefly tell us uh, how it has been? Yes, it's been a crazy experience for me even only getting asked about being Irish back in start of March, just before the last training camp. So to be here now is a crazy experience and obviously it seems like it shows me as a player how far I've come from where I've come from. Did you always hope that you play for Ireland one day? Yeah, obviously as I said, I started kicking the ball around here first, so obviously when I'm playing GA and into football, you always think about playing for your, for your country. And I think originally I'm from Makers West, grew up my life, done my school living, my family's still living. And in terms of your development at Blackpool, how has that been in recent times? Yeah, obviously I've come on uh, leaps and bounds from when I first joined them. Obviously had a period where I was out for nearly a uh, year with two, two or three different injuries. So to get back around Christmas time this year and hit the ground running, obviously it's earned me a call up. And you still have a lot to achieve in your career. You're 27 now, aren't you? Which is quite old to be called up, but you feel that there are plenty of years ahead of you to get where you want to. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I was a late starter. I always started things late, so didn't sign a pro until I was 19. Some of the boys are always in academies. I've never had that, so I think I'm getting better as I get older, if you know what I mean. I still feel fit, fresh, and ready to go. Thank you. I think how's it, please? Uh, Clonny Power, just yes. near Carlton Shore, yeah. And um, did you move to Sheffield United from Ireland or did you go over earlier? Uh, I moved over to England to my dad's when I was 16, 17. I done some development programme and Sheffield United came out of blue kind of somewhere. I went for a trial and ended up signing a pro a couple months later, so I worked out well. Yeah, in some way, because you, you never seem to be on the FBI's radar at all, apart from playing Kennedy Club. Yeah, it's obviously, I never put myself out there as like, because I never thought I'd play football when I first left, so it was a bit of a, a random one. So when I started getting to football, uh, I went under the radar because I never come out. Because obviously I, I was at a level where I didn't think I was gonna ever get a call up or anything like that. Now, obviously I'm at a, a stage where I, I've been doing well and obviously under the, the radar for everyone. Yeah, and then speaking to Stephen Kenny a couple of months ago when he mentioned it, he said he wasn't aware of you until someone tipped him off. Like, was that you, or did you an agent get in touch? I think it was someone from local down in Warford that actually said something. Obviously, at, at the time, I was more focused on getting fit and, and playing for my club and doing well. And obviously, then normally, when people do find out, they're on you straight away. Like, as soon as they found out I was Irish, it was quite quick to, to get everything sorted. And obviously, based on my performances, I've earned a call up. Yeah, uh, that was my manager at um, uh, Mansfield, to be fair. He was, he was the one that. Um, uh, like when he came in, obviously he was Irish and we used to have a bit of about Irish sports and stuff like that. So I think he had a big part to play as well. Damien, please. CJ, so, yeah, I think the manager described your career as the path less travelled. How, how challenging and uh, difficult has it been to get to where you are now? 
Yeah, I'd, uh, I'd say it's difficult, yeah, but I just love, love the journey. Like, you always try to achieve as much as possible, and obviously, when you do go up to England, it's hard to, to do that because there's so many boys in the same position as you. I think it's always about just having a good attitude, working hard, and as you see, um, I'll always work hard regardless of whether it's in training, doing it extras on the pitch. I'll always give, give my best, and obviously, it's coming to where I am today. Joe, please. I see Joe, thanks. Uh, you were saying that it's been great uh, the experience of getting well from the from some new older players. What's been the response being like from some of those more experienced players in the group to the loss against Armenia and now the games ahead? Obviously everyone's disappointed, we know it was a poor result, but even sitting on the dimensions has been crazy, like the temperature out there was ridiculous, but the older players are getting around everyone and making sure we're up for the game on, on Wednesday and, and make sure we put things right. Thanks. Paul? DJ, how are you doing? Just a few things just about the checking. What position did you play when you played GA? Was it just hurling or was it the football club? I played here, but hurling game football. I normally played in the forward lines, normally in the full forward lines because they used to isolate me because I was used to my pace at the use now. So, yeah, I used to play in the full forward line above. And what club was that with? Uh, so, hurling was Clannie Power and football was Rackhamic. Okay, and then in, in, in football, then when you were in what was your first club? Was it Port Law? Was it Dan Carrick? Or what was the program? Yeah, so someone came to my house when I was living in Clannie um, to ask me to play for Port Law. They'd seen I'd been playing GA and they were like, oh, like, you'd be really good at football. So I was like, why not? Like, I was 11, 12 at the time. So went there for a year and a half and then went to a better team, characters in a really better league. And that's how I think I got recognition for the Kennedy Cup and, and playing for Watford in them levels. Blackwood had a, a very good season and now you obviously the club wants to push you on. Your manager's left and he's left to right? Yeah, so yeah. obviously he's left to go on and be um, Stephen Jarrett's assistant. So um, now, so obviously, I think our group's good enough anyway to. So whatever manager comes in, we'll, we'll probably do the same way next season. Yeah, because you have to get out fully fit, aren't you, next season to push on? Yeah, exactly. Like I started last season with the same issue, like with a foot injury that I had. I shouldn't have really started personally, but I'm one of the ones that wants to play and do everything. And I got to a stage where I couldn't, couldn't continue. So now I'm fit, and fit now, so I'm looking to push on and do better, yeah. Aidan, then we'll end with Philip. Yeah, I see. Just of those early days when you were playing, did you play with anyone GA who would have gone on to a higher level in your county or saying with Kennedy Cup and, and what kind of level or what guys were on your Kennedy Cup team? Yeah, so in the GA I used to play against a lot of the boys that are in the Highland, Dean Alpha Watford, like Austin Griffin and players like that. And then football wise, I think some of the boys came over when they were younger, but they've always came back, so not really um, there. But had um, big, um, so like the Hunt brothers, they lived local to me, so they always drove me to play for Ireland and stuff like that as well. And just on the club situation, did you, Richard Keogh, obviously he's you know, formerly retired, but his days are probably gone. Did you speak to Richard about what it's like and did he give you an idea of what it's like being in the squad? Yeah, to be fair, when uh, Keezy first came in, he was one of the ones who didn't realise I was Irish either. And I said to him, he said, oh, I should get in contact with the club. And then it wasn't until I was fit, he said, oh, like, he knows people around. And he's one of the ones that told me how good the group was and how good the squad's going to be and how well we can do. Finally, John. Just see, um, what family do you have in Walford at the moment? So, my mum lives there, my sister, um, my auntie, I've uh, got loads of cousins that living in my village, so quite, quite a few of my granddads moved back over here now, so, yeah. Was he a bit of Dixie, is it? Yes. Yeah, was he a big influence on you? Yeah, you? he was the one buying me football boots or any boots for any games and, and equipment like that. He used to always drive me and my cousin, who's a year younger than me, we used to always play sports together, so he was the one that drove us to, to do well, yeah. Is he more of a hurling than I? Soccer man, I think. Uh, I think he was more of a fo uh, football man, soccer man, yeah. So he was more that side, but he just wanted to push us in anything we enjoyed doing. And that was the main thing for him, to, to do what we enjoyed. Thanks. One from Philip. Richard Kill, after there was it. Thanks, Aidan. Just uh, your, CJ, you're Christopher Nathan. Where did CJ from? So obviously my, my dad's Christopher as well, so since birth, obviously, he wanted me to name after him. So mum was like, oh, why don't we just call him Christopher Junior? So then there's no complications in the names and this little procedure, but you can have Christopher as a government name. So it's, it's junior. Junior, yeah. Junior. Thanks, guys. Thanks,